Hello, I am Joel, and we are going to do a little bit of Lightroom training today. I'm just going to take you through an imaging, uh, image editing example and show you how I basically go about editing a picture in Lightroom um, the way I would want it for my wall or my website or something like that. So this would be a select, and this is the image I'm going to work on. Now, number one, I start with a good capture in the camera. I want I want to get the best capture in the camera that I can because that's going to give me the most flexibility and the most information to work with. So if you look up in the histogram, you see this is the number of pixels in each level from pure black to pure white. Pure black and pure white, meaning no detail is to be found there or recovered. So you see I'm within the dynamic range of the camera there. So I have complete detail um, from pure black to pure white and that gives me the flexibility to kind of move the image around how I need to. Now generally I start with the the broad strokes and the global adjustments first before kind of going in and doing all the nuances. So but before I even begin that going to right click the image, uh, the preview, and select virtual, create virtual copy. So now I've got a virtual copy of the preview in Lightroom. Uh, it's not a duplicate file on the hard drive, it's just a duplicate preview in Lightroom. And now I've got a sandbox. I can pretty much do whatever I want with this image now, and nothing in the original is going to be affected. So the first thing I do is I usually go to and, and see if there's a profile that will just kind of automatically enhance the image. And I can kind of go through these and, you know, see what they all do, see which one might look the best. Well, I like, I think actually Vivid. Um, I thought Landscape was going to be better, but I like kind of what Vivid is doing. Let's see. Yeah, I think I can use Vivid. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just warm it up a little bit. One bump up to white balance is great. Um, you can select a preset. I usually do that to see, you know, which white balance is going to work best for the picture. Uh, but I'm going to go to custom and I'm just going to bump it. Hold shift and press the up arrow and that bumps it up one notch so it's just a little more warmth and yellow in there next i'm going to play with exposure and just see um you know maybe maybe one little bump up and that is going to be great yeah i'm going to make it two i'm just going to move my whites up a little bit um just five I'm going to take my blacks down just until they clip, okay? So I start at zero, I hold shift, and I go down until they clip, and then I go back up maybe one or two. So now I'm getting I'm getting the most out of the dynamic range from black to white. And I've got a good contrast set there. And I'm typically, automatically, I just bump the clarity by 5. Um, I might dehaze this a little bit. So, and then vibrance, if I can get away with it, I will bump that up a little bit. But I don't want the blues too overpowering here. So I'm just going to leave it at 0 for now. Then I go right to my detail. And I, I typically work from the top down, but I don't do much usually with tone curve or split toning. Sometimes I will play with hue, saturation, luminance, and color. Usually I don't. Um, so I will jump down to detail. And this is where I'm just going to look at my sharpening. I'm going to zoom in 100% for that. Pretty much always start with something more than 40. Uh, I'm just going to keep going up until I start to see too much noise or digital artifacts come in. So I think in this case 60 is good. Radius I almost always leave at 0.1 or 0.8 or I'm sorry 1 or 0.8. Detail generally around 15, sometimes 12. Masking. 
Masking is great because there are some areas of an image you don't want to sharpen. Uh, any uh, plain or detailless area, such as the sky, you don't want to sharpen all this up here. So if you don't want to sharpen it, you can mask it out. And that tells Lightroom, don't sharpen this area. And the areas in black are the areas Lightroom will ignore for sharpening. Um, so you just kind of play with the slider. And I'm holding Alt or Option. So pretty much the whole sky, no sharpening. Then I want to just take a quick check and see how much detail is it actually sharpening. And again, just kind of play with it for effect. Something around there is pretty good. If I do start to see too much noise, I'll do noise reduction. I typically have a fixed amount that I do um, per ISO. For ISO 100, it's usually zero or zero, one or two. Um, this being a micro four, th four third sensor, a little older camera, it's just a couple of grains of noise in there that I want to take out. So I'll go to two on that. All right. So here's where we are after the basic, pretty much global adjustments. Uh, I would normally do lens corrections automatically, do an enable profile correction, remove chromatic aberration. Um, but with Olympus, the lens profiles are built in. All right, now I'm going to go into the more of the nuances of the picture. And kind of what I'm seeing, I like the pop of color on the trees. I like the kind of directional light sweeping in from the right to the left. And I start to see this area up here in the kind of middle background that's just kind of catching the light. And that's really, for me the romantic part of this image. That's what I want to play with. The idea is um, morning light uh, in the autumn, but there's snow in the autumn. This is actually an October snow, so I really want there to be this play between the white of the snow and the colors of the autumn leaves and this romantic light that we have going on. Uh, but you see, you know, it's a great capture. I've got all the information, but how do we bring out the best in it? All right, first I'm going to do, I'm going to press M on the keyboard and we're going to bring up the neutral density filters. Now, if I hold shift while I'm dragging this down, uh, it'll automatically straighten it for me. Again, this is this tool, the neutral density filters tool. Okay, now as I drag this, I, I'm placing the filter and I can control the gradation um, by a narrow band. It's, it's a very sharp gradation. See how quickly that changes. If you expand it, it's a very gradual grade. It very gradually changes in intensity. Uh, and I'm going to make this an exposure overlay so i'm going to go down about a third of a stop maybe yep i'm going to go um two-thirds of a stop down in exposure I just kind of play with where i want that the edge of that gradation to be okay right about there i'm going to bring a little contrast in for the clouds Okay, I'm going to maybe, let's see, do I want it warmer? Maybe even cool it down just a little bit. Um, dehaze, yeah, I think dehaze, it's going to add a nice bit of drama to this guy. So again, by doing this, um, by dropping in this graduated ND filter and customizing it, I can customize just what's happening with this filter nowhere else in the picture and that's going to be where you know Lightroom is so powerful with this and you don't even have to take it in the Photoshop now I'm going to drop in another I'm going to drag up on the foreground 
because again, the eye is going to go to the brightest place in the image. And I want that to kind of be this middle background area where that little romantic bit of light is. And the shadows are a little cool here. I'm going to warm those up a little bit. I'm going to say, well, maybe not. I think I'm, I'm going to leave them cool. You know, you can, you can change the color temperature just of that, just of the affected area, but I'm just going to leave it cool for now. Now to reset something quickly, you just double click the name. And that resets it to zero. That's for pretty much any setting here. Uh, I think that's good for now, though. I'm not going to really change contrast or anything else. Okay. So now I went from that to this. Just by dropping in some NDs and doing some global adjustments. Alright, so now I want to bring out the pops of color that we have. I'm going to press K. That brings up our customizable brush tool and this is where the fun begins i'm going to make this a saturation tool i'm going to change the flow to 25 so that each time i it's not full intensity each time i click it's quarter intensity each time i click um so maybe even 20. so that way i bring in a little bit if I want more, I can go over it again and keep going over it until I get the intensity that I want. But I don't want it necessarily all in one pop. I just want to kind of dab it in some of these areas. And I want to bring out that yellow. That's what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of, kind of brush in these leaf clusters here and there. All right. Get these guys out here. I don't really want to touch much else. Just the leaf clusters where I want the most kind of color pop. And again, if I go over it multiple times, it, it gets more and more intense. Okay, even over here. Now these little bits of color up here I want to bring out too. So I'm going to keep going over those. And again, just the color, just the color. I don't necessarily want to bring out the shadow or the blues. I want to emphasize the warmer autumn colors here. So I'm just going to keep going over those until I'm at maximum intensity. And you notice in the saturation, I went all the way up to 100, but I changed the flow so that each click isn't full 100% intensity. Each click is just a little more and a little more until I just kind of get all those little pops of color that I want in the trees and where the light is hitting. There we go. Something like that. And to bring them out, I'm going to get even smaller here. And now we can really see a lot more control when we zoom in. Okay. Yep, see this little pop there. Maybe even a little bit back here. Anywhere there's a nice little autumn color or a nice little hint of light. I will bring that out with the saturation. It's subtle, but you will see it. And after I do that, I just want to pop the exposure just a little bit. Pop the whites a little bit. Bring the blacks down a little bit. Pop a little contrast into there. And 
Anytime you get an area that you don't want, you just hold Alt or Option, go over it again, that'll erase it. Okay. Alright, so, see how it just very subtly, we've popped out these colors and the yellows just a little bit more. I'm even going to hit these kind of this kind of brush in the in the front here. Just these little tops of the just to emphasize that the light is hitting these areas, okay? And again, bringing up the exposure. Now I can bring the exposure up more. You see what that does? A little too much and it changes the saturation a little too much. I think actually, I think even just leaving it at zero is going to be good. Okay, now I can create another brush. And I think I'm going to do, this time bring the whites up a little bit. But again, only in the areas where I want the light striking the trees to be emphasized only in those areas even a little bit back here all around this first couple of rows of trees this little spot and I'm actually I'm gonna go a hundred percent with the flow here and then I'm going to paint it all in and then I'm just going to adjust later to the intensity that I want. So I'm going to paint it in as 100%, get the areas I want, erase the ones I don't, okay. Let's erase a little bit over that. Okay. It's kind of brushing in and dotting in just a couple of areas where I want that light emphasized. Not everything, not the shadows. of places and, and not the left side because the light's coming from the right so we only really want the left side emphasized here and there and let's see do we want this tree yeah I would say even a little bit on this tree but not too much not too much okay so I think I'm going to go to flow back to 10 for this, and it's only going to affect new, new clicks. Nothing I previously brushed. Just kind of go in a little bit more on the whites here. Just to add a little bit more pop to those specific little clusters of leaves in this little shrubbery down here, this brush. That cluster, that cluster, that cluster. Okay. So again, let's take a look at that. And we can get a... just turn this brush on and off. And you see the difference that makes? kind of just emphasizes where the light is hitting. And this one shows you the first brush with just the exposure and the saturation. Okay. And here's our original, and here's where we are now. And we see we're just starting to kind of shape the light a little bit. 
and kind of emphasize and de-emphasize certain areas of the picture. Um, you notice by bringing the sky down, we're really guiding the eye back to this little highlight spot here. And we're letting it kind of go to these trees and bounce off the trees and then back up to this upper right background here. And same thing with the foreground. You see, if we make the foreground too bright, it's going to draw your eye away from where I want it to go. It just becomes a distracting. Now, it's subjective. You can play with that, but I just want it to be down about a third of a stop so that we're not drawn to that area. All right. And that is looking pretty good. Let's see, what else do I want to do? Okay, so let's go... Maybe, maybe with the whites here. Let's see, do I want contrast? I always add a lot just to see what the effect is like. And then I'll know if I want some there or not. Um, yes, I might. I might want to touch up that contrast a little bit. Yes, I like that. And so now going back to the saturation, I want to see. Oh yeah, see that definitely brought out a little bit of the warmth and the colors that were back in there. Oop. And the whites don't need to come up very much at all for that. Um, okay, let's see. Turn that off. Yep. Yep. And now for these couple of clicks, I'm going to go full 100% with the intensity. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back to 25. All right. Just bring more of this saturation out. Close that. As soon as my computer catches up. Oh yeah. Yep. I'm starting to like that quite a bit. Let's see. In this brush here. Uh, that's global. I don't want to do global exposure. I just want to do the brush. Yeah. So if I hover over these points, it shows me where the effect has been applied. And I don't, don't need it up here. Okay. down here And now I just want to do a little bit of a sweep. 
I'm going to start a new brush. I'm just going to do a sweep of exposure to kind of brighten up this little, little field area there. Kind of bring your eye, kind of connects the foreground and the background a little bit. So, and just a little bit. All right. And I think even a little more, even a little more of that in the back on these white trees here, just to kind of, again, highlight that little bit of light. Just enhance that idea that the light is playing around back there. Great. Great. A bit of light coming through here. All right, now I'm going to do, I'm pressing our um, and again, if I hover over these points, it shows me where the effect has been applied. So I can see all the areas that I brushed with that. And it also shows the, the intensity. If it's very faint, it means it was low intensity. If it's very dark, it means it was 100% intensity. I'm going to press R. We're going to crop in a little bit because I want to kind of nudge you more to the right. And bring this down a little bit so that your eye is kind of, kind of get rid of more of this highlight in the sky. So I just kind of bring the composition down or the crop down. Let's see if I want to do any more adjustments with the color. I like it. I don't want it too warm because it's kind of, you know, there's a contrast with the warmth of the trees and the cool of the snow. But if I warm it up, and again, it's subjective, but I don't want to warm it up too much. Um, I think right about there is good. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it. So here's our before. Let's give you a... can do a full screen here. All right, so there's our before. There's our after. So the eye will kind of bounce around on the left, but then it'll go up to this little, little clearing, this little opening in the field there. Eventually you see this little line of geese flying in the sky there. That's pretty cool. All right, and maybe, um, let's try this. Let's try might want to bring in some of the shadows a little bit more um, maybe darken them up so I start a new brush I'll do shadows yeah bring them down just a little bit in some of these shadow areas shadows and blacks black levels Again, just to kind of to emphasize the play, the play uh, between light and shadow. Okay, there we go.
Just brushing a little more shadow into these areas to give it that contrast between light and shadow. Okay. Over here especially where it gets much darker. And by bringing in the shadows and the black levels a little bit, we are also uh, deepening the saturation a little bit. Let's see, can I go through all the way through there? Yeah, I think I can go all the way through this. Uh, let's see if I can go all the way through this. Yes, I can, but then it affects everything. And that might be, well, let's see. Is that a little darker than we want? Maybe. And again, I'm just kind of painting this in. Um, might be a little dark, so I'm going to bring it up. Okay, I'm going to bring this in. And... This entire tree line up here, I want to bring in a little bit more. Okay, back here. I think I'm gonna kind of bring this back though. I don't I don't want that too dark. I'm just going to undo the brush on this foreground tree is just to fill in anything I might have erased. Same with this tree. I don't, I don't really want to do that whole part. I'm going to leave those a little lighter. Okay. Okay, so now let's see the effect of all that brushing. Okay. Oh yeah. It's a, just a little bit more pop now. Cropping is good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we look how we brought in a little more depth and dimension by kind of shaping and emphasizing the light and shadow um, just by doing a couple of global strokes and then a little more nuanced um, editing with the brushes and uh, graduated filters and this is why I recommend doing graduated filters when possible in Lightroom or in software not in camera because um, it's really hard to find a good graduated filter that you can use in camera that's not going to degrade the uh, picture quality but also because you have more flexibility when you're doing it in software. And when you shoot raw, you have that flexibility to really bring in the details and the highlights and the shadows. that uh, Flexibility that you don't have with JPEG. Alright, so I'm just going to check this ND grad on the top. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Ooh, do I want to go cooler with that? Maybe. Maybe a touch. Touch on the cooler side with the sky. Yeah, I like that. I think the, the sky recedes a little more when it's a little cooler. And this little area pops out a little more. 
All right, from here, I would bring it into color effects, and that's going to be the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about Lightroom or photography, please take my training. You can go to my website and sign up right now, joelnesslightphotography.com. Thanks a lot, and thanks for watching. See you next time.